Hey guys, so today's video is a bit of a different one. Um, we're talking about Gabby Hanna again, but not in like a, ooh, like tea, in like a, I'm concerned. And I think we should all be concerned. And also there's just a lot going on. So I'm gonna talk about it. I guess subscribe with that bell, like comment for engagement. And let's just get right into it. I actually saved a bunch of the relevant TikToks, but I don't think I'll play all of them for you guys because there's just way too many of them but there are some issues so Gabby Hanna has been trending for the last like two days and she's been also posting TikToks for the last two days which normally wouldn't be an issue Gabby Hanna trends every six months she'll usually start drama with people for attention to sell art to sell music whatever it is to sell a book I don't think that's the case this time she has been trending on Twitter for the last 48 days 48 days, 48 hours, and she has posted about 200 TikToks. And that's not an exaggeration, I'm not being like, oh my God, like 200 TikToks. No, 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 like she has actually posted about 200 TikToks. She posts every minute, then she goes to sleep, she disappears for a bit, I'm assuming she's sleeping. People are understandably concerned. And then she just comes back and posts every minute. Now, I'm not here to diagnose Gabby Hanna with any mental health issue. However, there have been people on TikTok or on Twitter talking about their own mental health struggles or their family members' mental health struggles and how there are similarities there are a lot of people who believe that this is a bipolar manic episode which is not to stigmatize bipolar as a mental health issue like that's not what we're doing here we're not trying to make her look evil for this or make anyone with bipolar look evil for this but i found this tiktok of a guy that has bipolar and says that his manic episodes look exactly the same so he is kind of seeing that similarity there between himself and gabby hannah so i'm gonna play that for you guys now my god you want to see the forbidden fruit that is a lantana berry. Watching that video as somebody with bipolar disorder was really disturbing. Manic people have a specific way of talking and I haven't heard that frenzied, excited tone of voice since it came out of my own mouth back in 2010 when I was walking into martial arts studios challenging people to duels and trying to buy apartments with my infinite credit card. Let's just say I've tasted some lantana berries of my own and they have a distinctly bitter aftertaste. This is not going in a good direction. Follow me if you want more mental health analysis of the situation. So just as like a bit of background, like as to what is happening and the fact that like this isn't tea, this is literally just like concerning. But other than that, you also have someone getting into her house and then filming the inside of her house mid a manic episode, allegedly, mid some kind of a episode for her mental health wise. Now there are some issues, right? She's posting these things about like, how she has found God and this is all like God related, which recently on my deep dive channel, I talked about Michelle Fon, who has been part of like a cult following situation she says that she's down this like spiritual route i feel like whenever that happens things start going wrong there is just something going on here um so she talks about god a lot hey guys guess what god does have dark humor he is a horny sick f just like us he made us in his image literally it's okay to have dirty thoughts i can teach you how to feel better about them for real there's also this live stream where she was talking about this is where people really start to find an issue and I think it's very difficult to talk about because she clearly is going through some kind of a mental health struggle but does it then excuse saying problematic things? You know, so for example, she said that black women are like very religious and they find God because they end up being single mothers because black men leave them to be single mothers so they have to rely on God which just feeds into the stereotype of black men leaving black women to be single mothers and it just perpetuates that stereotype. That wasn't great. And she also then made some transphobic comments. She also made some comments about how most people fake DID, which is dissociative, dissociative, dissociative identity disorder. I couldn't get that out for a minute. Hey TikTok, hey Gen Z, I got a question for you because <laughs> I can't sleep. <laughs> But I can see why are you so accepting of the idea of dissociative identity disorder where little kids decide that they can switch personalities whenever they want and they all have different names and wear different clothes and they have their own little room in the house that you built in your mind and here's how you get to it. I feel like someone else now. Did you fucking meditate and create something with your imagination? It's almost as if you create your own reality. And because you don't have faith in God, and because you didn't just say, God, I'm kind of fucking scared. I believe in you. Will you please only allow me to see what you want me to see? Please only allow me to hear the truth. 
please give me clarity. That was obviously problematic while going through our own mental health struggles to then downplay someone else's mental health struggles. Not great. She also called babies the forbidden fruit. I'm assuming she doesn't really know what the forbidden fruit means. She said how you can be like attracted to anyone except for babies because they're the forbidden fruit. Now forbidden fruit is something that you desperately want, like a guilty pleasure, like Adam and Eve, forbidden fruit. The apple was a forbidden fruit and it's a temptation that you have to fight. But like, let's not refer to babies as a temptation that we have to fight. It's just something that's illegal. Let's not be attracted to babies. So there's a lot going on clearly that is just not amazing right like this is not great there are many tweets of people discussing this either being like hey i'm concerned for gabby hannah then there's the camp of is she doing this for attention is there going to be an album dropping soon which normally i would believe this if it was five tiktoks maybe 10. it's been going for two days and 200 tiktoks i think we're past the is gabby hannah doing this for attention i personally don't think that's the case and i would not like to be proved wrong like i hope that she's okay but i also hope that this isn't something that she's faking to then stigmatize mental health even more so, but i don't think she is just to be clear i'm not on this camp and then there's the camp of people being really angry about the problematic comments that she has made about different mental health conditions transphobic comments as well as racist comments she also keeps on referring to herself as a person of color because she's middle eastern you know as the cops were at my door for a wellness check one of the neighbors came and interrupted us and scolded one of the officers because the car was, the cop car at the neighbor's house was blocking his driveway. But then she also says that she's also white because she has some French and Polish in her. Are you ready for the secret? You can be two things or three at once. I'm also French and Polish. I'm 100% Polish, that was a weird, I was watching that like, whoa, this is a weird moment for me. So she's calling herself a person of color and white at the same time, and then she posts this TikTok being like, you can be more than one thing at the same time. There's just a lot going on. Um, people keep on, you know, being like, no, you're not. There's a lot happening. Also, there are a lot of TikToks in her bikini where she's like dancing quite provocative. Like there's just a lot going on. And I keep on thinking like, oh my God, I hope nothing like pops out and she doesn't get like banned or something because in that state, I just don't think that she's controlling like how she's moving and I don't think she's necessarily like thinking about what she's posting. Like the other day, well today, because I went on her TikTok again, she was posting TikTok straight out of the shower and I feel like her camera went really low and I was just panicking for her because I was like, I hope that she doesn't post anything that she will then like really regret, even though she, she's already posted a lot that she'll probably regret, but just, you know, further, I was just like, well, like we just need to, you know, and TikTok's very harsh with their community guidelines. So there's just a lot going on. Now, I'm gonna actually get into the bit that I was more concerned about, like the bit that I was like, this is bad. There's this guy, his TikTok name is, and I'm not saying his TikTok name for you guys to like go there and be angry at him, but also I don't think he's a great guy. So his at is p.ui underscore, and he's this weird guy. And I mean this sincerely weird guy who saw a woman have a mental breakdown on the internet clearly going through a mental health struggle he then live streams and i don't have this live stream but i did see pieces of it where he was talking about how he'll go to her house and pretend that he needs to use the toilet and then what does he do he actually goes ahead with the plan oh hi hi, hi. think you can use your bathroom yeah sure yeah Come on. thank you hey there's mine oh, what's you. your name my name is nick nick nice, nice to meet you, you. Right there, right okay. here? Right there. Right here? Yeah. Oh, thank you. And walks up to her house and he actually posts this interaction where he's like, hey, I need to use the toilet. And she thinks that he's just this random stranger on the street, just needed to use the toilet, so she lets him in. They start hanging out while he's actively walking around her house, filming her um, medicine, filming inside of her house, filming her cats, filming her. This is such an exploitation of someone going through a mental health struggle that I can't even begin to describe what's going on in my head. I'm so concerned for Gabby Hanna, but also just her safety because clearly she's just letting anyone into her house because she's not thinking clearly. She doesn't, she's not thinking about her health and safety. She's just letting these people into her house, just trusting anyone and people are abusing that privilege. You know, he found her address on the internet so anyone else can do it. He literally said like, hey, like I just found her address on the internet promoting the fact that you can just find her address on the internet and show up to her house and she'll probably let you in. That's what he's promoting. That's what he's trying to show people on the internet. It's gross. So he's filming her 
filming himself, filming her, filming everyone. And then people are in her comment section, you know, as she's filming like, hey, this angel came into my life. I'm going on a run with him, like spending the whole day with him. Under the, all the TikToks, people are commenting saying, hey, like his plan all along was to go into your house. Like he knows who you are. He found you on the internet. Whereas she thought he was just this like random stranger. She, she thought he was an angel that came to her with some kind of a message. She then finds out obviously from the comments that he knows who she is and this TikTok happens. By the way, Nick, yes. I know you know who I am. Come on. Why did you lie to me this whole time? Why what did you this? lie to me? That's for my acne, you dumb Get the fuck out of my house, now. Now, now. The way her mood changes, I understand that she feels violated, obviously. It's just the way her mood changes. I feel like there's just so much happening in these TikToks that is so concerning. I actually decided to go on her sister's TikTok because her sister is like, big on TikTok, she's like verified and all of this stuff. So I went on her TikTok and people are saying like, hey, check on Gabby. And she has started to limit her comments now because obviously people are just leaving. Like it's just, everyone's just saying, hey, check on Gabby. Someone said, hey, you should check on Gabby. And she said, I live in Pennsylvania. Everything that can possibly be done by us is being done. This is not my situation to speak on, so I'm not. And then she posts a separate comment on that same TikTok saying, this video was filmed and posted a full day before anything was happening or at least before we were aware. We are all in Pennsylvania and she's in LA. We are doing what can be done from here. At the end of the day, you are all strangers on the internet. It's none of your business regardless of level of concern. Obviously, we are aware and doing what we can. She's an adult. I'm a 20 year old on the other side of the country. Comments from this point on are limited because none of you know how to respect personal boundaries. You're speaking to and about real people. I think she's clearly upset about people asking her to check on Gabby. I haven't really seen any disrespectful comments. Maybe that's because I went on her TikTok after she restricted comments. I'm not really sure because every single comment that I saw was just saying like, hey, can you check on Gabby? Like we're very concerned, which I don't think is necessarily a violation because Gabby put it out on the internet and because Gabby and Cecilia, who's her sister, like are public figures both. So I think like people are just concerned, but I don't know what the comments looked like before she limited her comments, but I know there were a lot of tweets on Twitter saying like, hey, where is Gabby Hanna's family? Where are her friends? Like anyone to check on her. She also had a wellness check done by the police and she posted a lot of TikToks about that. Now it started off with her being like, I'm thankful for the police coming. One of the things the officers, actually almost all of the officers asked me over and over and over again is, you know, the reason we're here is we just have to make sure that you don't want to hurt anyone or yourself. And I just laugh and say, no, I don't want to hurt anybody. I literally died for them again. Hello? And then they ask me again. And then they send more people. One time I was in the shower, had to come out, was standing out on my porch, fucking dripping wet in my towel. One time I was at Trader Joe's, they asked me if I could come home for them to make sure I was okay. <laughs> They come at 4 a.m. And I keep telling them I'm fine. They say, are you okay? My life is a constant state of vacation. I'm enlightened. Are you okay? Why are you concerned about me? Oh, you're concerned about yourselves because Jesus was a radical, barefoot, Middle Eastern refugee. This also did a wellness check and claimed that she was fine, which anyone on the internet can see that she's clearly not. And I'm not sure how the wellness check was conducted and how they came to that conclusion. But you know, that's besides the point. But then the TikTok just kept on going and going. And then towards the end, she was very angry at the police talking about how they were scared of her. <laughs> and how they handcuffed, like there was just a lot going on. There is such a shift. Like she'll talk about one thing and then talk about another thing. Then she also talked about how someone broke into her house after kicking out the Nick guy. I did ask those two officers though, did you go get the, the guy who admitted to getting into my home by coercion to try to cause harm? Did you find him? Did you try? You didn't know his name. Who went into her house and then she just stopped posting on TikTok for a few hours. And people were obviously concerned that like someone came into her house, but no one was there. And then she just posted a ring doorbell video of herself splashing water around in front of her house, which I'm not gonna post on here because I feel like I'm doxing her, even though she already doxed herself, like just showing the front of her house, showing where she lives, like what the street looks like. I, I'm so concerned. So there was that one TikTok that I was talking about where she said, right before they cuffed and detained me without reason after I asked 
mocked me and demeaned me in my own home. What made me laugh was all five grown-ups flinched every time five foot five and a half, 155 pound little old me in my skin tight workout clothes. They flinched every time I shifted even a little. It's almost like they're afraid I have superpowers. And she goes on talking about how she has these superpowers or she's almost godlike or she's an angel or um, she constantly refers to some kind of god watching her right now. And then in the TikToks today that she's been posting, she also refers to a dad watching her, which is God. Like she was making a TikTok and an airplane flew across the sky and she was like, oh, dad is watching. Like it feels almost big brother-esque. Like she feels like she's constantly being watched, which just then makes me feel like she's really going through it right now. Like clearly just to touch on some people's theory that this is all for attention. There is a obviously pattern of her doing this in the past, but also her TikToks now are getting sometimes five, seven, eight million views. And before she did all of this, they were getting 100,000 views with not even a thousand likes. I think this is more curiosity than anything. Some people are just very curious. Some people are very concerned. Some people just wanna know what's going on. That's where the views are coming from, but I don't think that was necessarily her intention. Even though she posted this TikTok. By the way, guys, I have to do this for the rest of my life here on this earth, unless you guys just decide to like wise up. And um, I'm really tired. <sighs> Thanks for waking me up. I still don't think that, that she's mentally well right now. Um, and I don't think she's doing this with full consciousness and like knowledge of what she's doing. And I don't think this is like an attention ploy. That's what I'm saying, but you know. She's mainly posting TikToks as well, where she's responding to people's comments on TikTok. You know, you can like respond to someone's comment with a TikTok. So people are saying things like, I've lost all confidence in wellness checks. She said, officer two mocked me, um, asking to catch my breath first and ground myself. The exchange looks as I tried to slow my heart rate as I had been woken up by men pounding up, shouting at my door. As he was leaving, he said, wouldn't want to have to stop to breathe again. And I said, sir, I will never lose breath for you again. I could see the Holy Spirit leave him. No, literally. The fact that she apparently did all of this and the police officer still thought, no, she's fine. I'm really starting to lose faith in, in wellness checks. I think there definitely should have been something done just for her own safety. Also regarding safety, she posted this TikTok where she said that she's not, she hasn't harmed anyone yet. And she keeps on using the word yet. Like she hasn't harmed herself or other people yet. Like as of yet, I haven't done this. And people are really catching on to her use of the word yet, which is why the wellness check really is concerning to people that she has been left just to her own devices. But in a recent TikTok, there is someone else at her house and it's not Nick, apparently. And by the way, the two officers that just once again entered my backyard and refused to leave, they just wanna know if I'm okay. Are we okay? We're fine. I told them I'm hanging out in my backyard with a friend, smoking weed. He brought his instruments and his dogs. Can I exercise my right to free speech in the United States of America and express and practice my religion? Or should I move back to the Middle East like you want us immigrants to do? Oh, it was my ancestors that were immigrants. Or am I, oh right, I'm white or Middle Eastern or whatever it is I'm supposed to be, right? But she's just hanging out with someone and there's someone in her background and then she addresses them and they respond to her question and it's a voice, uh, but we don't know who it is. So I'm wondering kind of if they're there to help her, if it's like a friend, just keeping an eye on her, I hope. But that is really all we know so far. I don't really know where this is going. I don't know what's going on. I just thought, and mention, please don't look up people's houses on Google, um, as in like YouTubers or famous people, don't look up addresses on Google and show up. If someone's going through a mental health crisis, you can call the police and say that this and this person on the internet is going through it, but that's really all that's appropriate for you guys to do or reach out to public figures that are part of her family, AKA her sister, but her sister has kind of said that she doesn't want to be addressed with this anymore. Don't look for her family on social media if they're like, private, don't show up at her house and don't trick her into letting you into her house and then film the inside of her house and violate her privacy while she's going through a, what seems to be a mental breakdown. Like I didn't think I'd have to go on youtube.com to tell people not to violate someone's privacy, mainly when they're in a vulnerable situation where their health and safety isn't at the top of their priority list. Like please have, have some 
I don't know, just have some like humanity. It would have been enough if he, if he genuinely wanted to make a change, he could have just showed up to the address and then called the police and then left. Going into the house wasn't, and then he went on live and he started like justifying himself and he posted some TikToks where like, he was trying to get her to eat and just this weird savior complex. So I just got back home and showered after everything that happened and um, I wanted to address some of the comments like, yeah, I was trying to get her to eat something. I was trying to get her to drink something. You can see in some of the videos that she posted, I was trying to, I was giving her the water that she gave me. I was looking at the medications that she had. Maybe if I could try to like get some, get a medication into her body that would help her um, come out of the psychosis. I've seen it before. I've had friends, I've dealt with it before. So honestly, I was just trying to help. I'm not here for it. Shame on you. Anyway, that's that on that. I'm hoping she'll be fine. And we'll kind of just see where the story unfolds, but hopefully in a positive direction. And she doesn't regret too much of what she's done because obviously usually when people go through a mental breakdown, it isn't all on the internet. And this is a very different situation than usual. So, so I'm actually coming back in to discuss some updates, but I didn't want to do my makeup for these updates. And I didn't want to turn on my big camera with my big light and my big girl, everything. So uh, you're getting a photo booth recording like always editing angelica coming back in i haven't posted this video in so long well i actually filmed this video probably four or five days ago when this whole thing was going down probably four days ago i think it was a friday um we're now on a tuesday when this video is supposed to be going up and i just haven't posted it because i felt like things were going to take a turn and i'm and I just wanted to make sure that the video was completely up to date. And even posting it now is obviously not going to be completely up to date. But I just wanted to make sure that I had all the information. And now it seems like Gabby Hanna on her TikToks is starting to come down from whatever episode this was. Um, her tone of voice is much different. She's much less erratic. She's much less chaotic, um, I guess is the correct word. She's a lot more composed in the way she speaks. Um, her movements aren't so kind of all over the place um you can tell that she's very different to the way that she was posting this whole time right before i started posting again i was off for a week in a silent prayer and meditation retreat by myself at my house which i do often sometimes i'll go for a couple weeks sometimes i'll go for a month at a time i think the longest break i took was like six months or something so you can tell that she's already kind of going back to her usual self you know episodes aren't Whatever episode this was, I'm not diagnosing her. Whatever mental breakdown episode this was, those don't last forever. They they obviously last different lengths of time, but they don't last forever. So there was going to be a point of time when she was going to come down from it. And I think she's now coming down from it. And she's continuing to post TikToks. But now the TikToks have a weird spin on them where it's almost like she's self-aware of how she's coming across. I don't even know how to explain this. It's almost like because she doesn't want to admit that she had an episode and and just say like, hey guys, you know, um, I didn't want this to be public, but I guess it is public. I guess that's what I did. And I said a few things that I regret. Um, instead of maybe deleting the TikToks, um, she's almost going more into it and being like, well, I posted all those TikToks because you guys were watching them and I didn't have an episode. I was just expressing myself creatively and you guys were the ones pushing me to post all the TikToks because you guys were watching them and reacting. Believe it or not, guys, it doesn't take that long for me to take these TikToks. Like, oh my God, she posted a hundred TikToks. She's manic. It's at the tip of our fingertips. I literally open the phone, press a button and talk. <laughs> you guys have been talking about me all day and I've been talking to you all day. Are you manic? Because you guys have not shut the fuck up about me. I'm doing something productive and creative. <laughs> are you? Or are you just talking about my art? <laughs> and then people started to kind of once again do the thing of like, was this all fake? Which I still, I still, in my deep heart of hearts, believe that she actually was going through an episode and now coming down from it, she is noticing the backlash and it's finally coming to her and she's finally understanding it. And instead of just admitting fault which Gabby Hanna fails to do throughout her whole career it's something that we've talked about time and time again uh you know the Jesse Smiles thing just many different situations where she could have admitted fault things could have been cut short 
she always fails to do so. And I feel like this is another one of those situations where instead of just saying, hey, guys, like, I was clearly going through something. Uh, she doesn't have to tell us what she was going through. Just like, hey, guys, I was clearly going through something. I'm so sorry for anything that's said. And we all could have just collectively said, okay. Like, th- I'm not saying people would have forgiven her, but I'm saying we could have all just said, okay. Instead, she's now doubling down and saying... I posted those TikToks because you guys were giving me attention for them. And guess what? TMZ is writing about me. I found out yesterday I was on TMZ again. (laughs) I actually didn't know. I haven't been on Twitter, Instagram. I haven't turned on my TV. I haven't been like searching the news at all. But just like Brit, hey TMZ. And this is where people start to get really lost. Because now it does fuel the conspiracy theory that she's been doing all of this because her music career is failing which is always the case. It's always the case of she has these big outbreaks on YouTube or Twitter or TikTok or wherever it is. And then shortly after she releases an album or a song or a book or a piece of art or some new channel or some new project. And people have been so conditioned to believe that now that even seeing this like very distressing situation, people are still thinking, oh, oh she's 100% doing this because she's releasing this, this and this. I actually think it's she was going through some kind of an episode. Um, some kind of uncontrolled episode where she wasn't in control of herself but now that she's coming down from it like I said instead of just admitting fault and saying hey guys like you know this happened like I don't I don't really know what to say like this just like I'm sorry uh you know whatever um she's saying oh well it's your guys's fault because you give me attention and now and now TMZ is writing about me um and it does end up sounding like all of this worry that people had for her did it really make sense? Um, it does sound like she's kind of happy that this whole thing happened, um, which obviously she isn't. Obviously, obviously she isn't. Um, I don't think anyone would be. I don't. Yeah, I have so many thoughts and so many opinions. And I think just the TikToks that she's posting now are proving the people who thought this was fake all along right. When I don't think they were right. I think she was actually going through a, a, an episode where she was not in control of what she was saying. But now the way she's spinning the story in, or she, th- well, in what she thinks is her favor is actually doing the complete opposite. Um, I hope I'm making sense. I never want to diagnose someone. I don't want to shame someone for having an episode, which is why I didn't shame her this whole video. I, I tried to present things as clearly as possible to explain why people are so upset. And now I just wish she had approached this differently. I don't know what else to say. That's it. You guys let me know what you think. Um, yeah, that's it. Anyway, that'll be it. Let me know what you guys think about this whole thing and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.